Hello, welcome to my channel, Connection of Lives and Interests. This is Sharon coming to you with another cooking video. I don't do a whole lot, but I do like to share some. And Mr. Thumbs Up does do cooking too. And I was going to film him the other day. <laughs> he made... Um, he cooked a whole chicken and cut it in half and seasoned it all up and everything. And I was busy, of course, and I'm missing a lot of stuff being busy. And he sat down and I said, well, I would like to make a video of you in what you cooked. And he goes, well, it's already in the, it's already in the oven. And... I already put all my rest, my uh, seasonings away, so I don't remember what I did. <laughs> so, what he he did do that I know is he found a recipe online, and then, as many of us do, we do our own improvising of adding or taking away according to what we like or don't like. So. How many of you do that? Do you make the recipe exactly the way it is the first time or at any point and then you doctor it up after you know what it was supposed to actually be like? And cheers to our coffee. <laughs> Hold on. And I was supposed to have done this dish the last three days. My hands are clean, y'all. But, I by the end of the day, I'm back to my falling asleep. I either go to the couch or lately I've been actually just reclining. And our recliners are from Lazy Boy. And normally we're, we don't get really good furniture type of thing to spend a lot of money on. But you can't beat Lazy Boy. And, you know, I'm saying and a lot. I'm going to have to end with that. <laughs> but they last a lifetime. They really do. We, we had Lazy Boy at our other house for, oh my goodness, our, our other places. We had our last Lazy Boy for Mr. Thumbs Up from the time that our son, who is now 28, was a baby until our house flooded in 2015. Our whole house flooded. And even though we put stuff up and all that, you know, you just don't know how high the water is going to go. We pretty much lost the big stuff. But God got us through it. He always does. And we're still standing. I mean, that house flooded. We were at that house for 16 years in the last three years. One right after the, the other, the house flooded. So we ended up leaving. Now, hopefully, this is our forever home. And I'm saying you could think that a house is your forever home, but only God knows, right? So I'm cooking up some kielbasa. And I'm doing another cabbage dish, and I notice that a lot of you comment that you love cabbage. So I'm cooking this up just a little bit because it's pre-cooked kielbasa, or some people say sausage, just to get some of the juices. So I'm done there. I uh, I always leave about this much kielbasa left. See kielbasa sausage. And uh, save that for making a sandwich with, with mustard. So wash my hands. How many of you enjoy kielbasa sausage sandwiches with mustard? Comment below if you eat that or if you don't eat it in a sandwich or what else you have with it. I'm going to pause you for now so I can get this out and... Get the next step going. I don't want to have too long of a video. Okay, now I'm slowly adding the cabbage. 
cabbage as it cooks down into the juices of this meat. And then when that gets all cooked down, then I'll be adding some other things that I won't be cooking thoroughly because I want it to be different in this recipe. So comment below what kind of kibasa sausage you like if you eat it. My sister loves, I don't really know exactly what it is, but those of you that are really into kibasa sausage, <laughs> it says kibasa on the package. And I think some of them actually say kibasa sausage. So let me see if I have one right here. It might be outside in the other freezer. I believe it is. Oh well. I've shown it before on my channel. So, something about blue seal kibasa. I think that's the name of it. I know it has blue in it. And she absolutely positively loves that. But she says, well, last I knew. She said it costs like $9 for just, you know, a kibasa like this. So, I, I can't spend money like that on some foods. Because my thing is, if I'm going to spend money on something, it's something that I want to stick around and last and be able to use over and over and over to get my money's worth. You know, like pots and pans or whatever. I don't spend a lot. <laughs> With that said, I don't spend a lot of money on pots and pans. Oops, I'm flowing. Flowing. Wait. <laughs> I'm throwing food around. <laughs> oh my goodness. What a hot mess. Okay. I rinse it, y'all. And it's just us eating it. I would never do that to guests, okay? There's some things that we do at home that we're comfortable with and, you know, you just don't do for your, your guests that you have. Speaking of guests, I want you all to know that, and I've said it a few times, but if you're prone to watching my cooking videos over others, maybe you haven't heard the news, but my mother-in-law is coming for the entire month of March. So, I really will kind of be MIA. I'm hoping that y'all will continue to support my channel by watching older videos and whatnot to keep my watch hours up. Uh, you know, we don't see her much. She's in um, Washington State, and she is 86. She'll be 87 in October, and we did almost lose her probably like three years ago. So it's, it's a wonderful miracle that she's able to come and stay with us. Her and Mr. Thumbs Up's dad was supposed to be here four years ago this coming March. But then the pandemic hit. And since then he's passed away, sadly. So it's just going to be his mom. And I've been busy, you know... I was looking for hotel stays in Charleston. We're going to, you know, because it's two and a half hours away to go to downtown Charleston. And that's a lot of traveling in one day and then spend time down there. And there's so much to see and do that we're just going to, um, I know some of you probably don't stir as much as I do, but it's just, I, that's just what I do, especially if I'm talking. And... I'm prone, and it's still cooked, y'all. Look at that. Look at that of food. So we're staying at a hotel at some point down there for two nights and three days. So we can get a lot of stuff in. She's been here before. We've seen a lot of this stuff. But it was when Christina was little, and she's 38. So time to get back there, right? Revisit. Comment below if you ever revisit places you haven't been for a long time. 
and what are those places that you like to revisit. I know some people have commented below that they like Pigeon Forge, and um, there's another place, you know, Smoky Mountains and Cass, um, Cades Cove, but there's also another place near Pigeon Forge, and I tried to talk about it in the last video that I was filming, that I was sharing about traveling, and I still can't remember the name of the place. I don't know why. I think I'm just a um, person that I experience going there and being there, seeing all the signs, and definitely getting the souvenirs of uh, magnets and postcards like I've showed in another video that I would remember. I would have to go through the alphabet to remember. I'll have to I'll have to ask Mr. Thumbs Up because I know he's he would remember. And he's currently outside breaking the yard, you know, because we have all the deadage from all the fall leaves. He was using a leaf blower, but it's so powerful that it just blows the bark and everything. And let me ask you, if you have shrubs or and or flowers planted in the ground in front of your house, you know, like a lot of houses have the sidewalk and then they have a space of, like in front of our house, I've shown many times, a little area from the steps to the end of the porch, you have that space where a lot of shrubbery is or people have... Uh, plants, flowers, and stuff. Well, this house came with shrubs. I'm not a shrub kind of like person. I prefer to have flowers. So I've been talking to Mr. Thumbs Up about, I would just like to pull them up and we could grow grass and have plants, flower plants in pots. And he doesn't really like that idea so, because when you put down the, uh, you know, the little pieces of uh, wood chips, yes, thank you, thank you, thank you, uh, you know, they fade away before the season's over and we don't want to keep spending money putting it down every year or every other year. And we have trees out front that the leaves just fill that area. I don't like the idea of dealing with that, and neither does he. And to take a leaf blower, it blows everything. It blows the leaves and the cedar, not cedar chips, but the wood chips. So comment below what you have in your yard, or if you don't have it in your yard, if you have that kind of space, what would you do with it to solve this issue? To make it look nice, but then it's easier maintenance. I was, are y'all saying this? I was kind of thinking about maybe some monkey grass or something. But then how would that be if a, a leaf blower was blowing those? Are those hardy to be able to just get the leaves out? I don't know. Uh, trees are a, a blessing and a non-blessing, I'll say it that way, because they give us the shade, but, you know, they shed. <laughs> I don't like the shedding. We like the color changing, but why couldn't they just color change and stay that fall color until spring comes, and then they can turn back to green, right? I know, there's reasons, I know, I'm just saying from a human thought process. Alright, I'm going to um, do some more preparing of things and get back to you. I hope you're still watching. Welcome back. I, in a separate pan, because I chose to, I'm cooking up some onions and peppers and I got the rest of that kvassa and I just cooked it all up and now I'm putting in a little bit of this 
garlic. How many of you use that? I can't use garlic that fast enough. So that's what I use. I would love to learn how to grow garlic. But I'm just cooking these up lightly because I'm going to incorporate it in there. And then I'm going to add something else and it's going to simmer, covered up for about 20 to 30 minutes. And it's all about the tenderness of what you want your cabbage to be. So I'm happy with this. I'm going to add it to that and cook something else up that I'm going to put together. So stand by and comment below if you're still here, what pans do you like to buy and where and why? If you're still here watching, I have some things for you. The question I asked about the pan was a frying pan, so I wanna know which ones you buy, where and why. And I am going to reward the person or persons, I'll do a drawing or make it, everybody gets rewarded, I don't know. If you've answered every question that I ask in this video, that person will get something. It could be one or more things. Shout outs, sharing your video on my community post, giving your watch time by running a playlist, and or maybe a giveaway. It could be one or more of those things. So if you want to get rewarded, go back and make sure you answer all the questions. So this dish is best with the pork flavored. I'm gonna have to order some from Walmart online because they don't sell it in the stores for some reason. And my next question is, if you make this soup, do you use a whole seasoning packet? We don't because it's um, too much sodium. So I just add about half, I'm guessing. It's hard to know for real. But uh, I just go ahead and take some and try it. Plus you've got all the flavors from the dish I'm putting it in and I'm going to simmer it. So we've got the cabbage and the green peppers and the onions and the kibasa. And then I'm going to be incorporating this soup into this pan. Hold on while I try this. Hopefully it's not too hot. Yes, it needs more flavor. So, uh, I'm going to simmer this all for maybe about 30 minutes is usually what I do. And that's why I didn't really want to cook the peppers and onions too much because it is going to be cooked longer in the pan. That last one didn't taste like it had anything, but it definitely has color. And by what it looks like in the packet, I think I've put enough in. Yes, so I throw the rest away. So that one's cooked. And I want to show you, doesn't this look good? So you can see the, the peppers in the cabbage and all that. I'm going to stir this all up really good. Comment below what you would change if you were to change anything. And I did use a big green bell pepper. You can use as much or as little as you want. And I used, I had a big white onion. You can use whatever onions you like. And again, I, I like to clean the pan with the food. I've showed many times in videos, and I, I use three quarters of the large onion, but again, you use as much or as little as you want. 
and it has some really good coloring in here and deliciousness so now this has cooked for over three minutes and all this juice in the noodles and stuff and again it is like night and day with this dish with the pork flavored so you can use whatever soups or whatever you want if you want to just cook up some small noodles separately and use whatever broth you want from a can stock you know, car carton or whatever you do that you could leave the noodles out you could just use the chicken stock broth and don't have the noodles it's whatever you feel like but what's good about this is this is going to simmer nicely together and make a great meal so please comment below how you would rate this dish and if you would like to make it yourself I hope you'll give me a thumbs up and I want to thank you for watching let me know below what you think about my puppet uh, shorts and shout outs I've been doing I, I've been doing those. Have you been watching those? Another question. I hope you join my channel if you haven't yet. I hope you'll hit that bell if you haven't so you don't miss any upcoming notifications so you can decide what videos you want to watch that I post and skip the ones that don't interest you. We all do that, right? I have cooking and palette building and now puppet shows and Mr. Thumbs Up 55 210 four door Chevy he bought so there's something for everybody. Be kind, be nice, and be encouraging no matter where you are through the internet. We can touch lives, we can make a difference, we can make people smile, laugh, and give encouraging words. Remember, keep the fun and all you do and if you were waiting for me to say do you cover this yes cover it simmer it on low for 20 to 30 minutes according to how tender you want your cabbage to be thanks for watching have a good one I appreciate you oh let me tell you please check out pre retirement days cooking videos check out Judy May Collins cooking videos and check out and I'll put their links below and please check out Melda I believe it's 242 I just shouted her out in a puppet show which um, shout out I should say I don't know if I you know when I'm uploading this video or posting this video but it's M E L D A 242 and I know there's another one let's see Judy, my brain's, oh, oh and pre-retirement days, uh, it must be Melda that I was thinking, and I know there's another one, I, I, I feel like there's four, and I'm sorry if I left you out, but if you comment below, and I see your comment and you cook, I'll add your link in the description below. How about that? I can make it up to you. Thanks. Bye.